Hello basketball coaches and basketball players. My name is Alan from Al's Basketball Training and today I'm going to show you every single full court zone defense that you'll see in basketball. So hello everyone, my name is Alan from Al's Basketball Training. On this channel I show you basketball plays, drills, and skills. So if you like that stuff, hit that like button and subscribe. I do post new videos every single day. And on Tuesdays and Thursdays I do individual basketball training. So of course if you like that stuff, join my, my, my channel and you'll love it. Believe me, I, I bet you'll love it. But anyways... Basically, today we'll talk about what a full court zone defense is, what they're used for, and every single one on a clipboard. So, basically, a full court zone defense that is used to usually trap players along the sidelines so you can get a quick, easy turnover and maybe even an easy basket. But, why are they used? Basically, a lot of coaches will use them at the beginning of the game or beginning of the half because they want to wear down the opponent or psychologically wear them down or just get in their heads and make sure that you get some quick, easy baskets. So, let's get down to the clipboard and let's check out every single one of these plays and why to use them, what to do, and my little tips and tricks. Okay, so first we have the 1-2-2. Two, two. Basically how these defenses get their name is the number of players in each one of these lines. So pretend that each one of these is a line. There's also like a 1-2-1-1, one, 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 just like this. That kind of idea, but we'll go over that one later. Right now we're doing the 1-2-2. Two, two. The idea behind every single full court press break or press defense is... To trap the opponent on their side of, or sorry, on your side of the court. Woo, I'm getting confused here for a second. On your side of the court, because then they can't obviously go out of bounds and they can't obviously go back over the half court line, or else that's over and back. You want that, the other team doesn't. So you want to trap them on one of those two sides. Now, going along with this, once the ball is inbounded to a player, let's just go grab player 5 for an example. Player 1, his job is to force the ball left or right. That is his main goal. Now, these guys, their goal is to continue that player so that he doesn't go into the middle of the court because we, as a defense, you want the ball to stay out of that area. You want it to go up the sidelines. So his job is to direct the player towards the sideline. Player one is to stop him from continuing back over this way. Now, a nice idea, a nice trick, tip that I use is the players on the opposite side cannot go past half court or the mid court line. That way, they're still cutting off that, that reverse pass. You don't want reverse passes. Now another little tip and trick is these two players, they never go past half court unless you have the ball. Uh, the reason behind that is if they go past half court to try and trap, now that leaves this whole side of the court open and you don't want that. So now by keeping these players home at half court, by the way, these two players, they never get ahead of where the ball is. If there's another player over here who wants to reverse, that's totally fine, but you don't want the player here to reverse. So, always, wherever the ball is, they stay behind that. So, by having it like this, which sort of moves like that, now these players move into their spots. He's zoning here, he's zoning here, he's zoning here, and that way you have now stopped the ball and trapped it there. So now we have the 1-2-1-1. One, one, one. Now, coming up, we don't want these two players to go past where the ball is. But we also don't want them to go past this free throw line. Player 4, he has to stay behind half. And player 5 has to stay be behind the three-point line extended. Again, same idea. Forces him left or right. And then these players are the ones who direct the players towards that sideline. Again, if the player is on this side of half, we don't want player 3 to go past that 
center imaginary center court line now player four he may be able to move just a bit towards the sideline but not a heck of a lot because we don't want the ball to go down the center of the line with player four guarding right in the middle he is able to pick off passes here as well as here but as soon as this player moves up player three on the other side he has to stay in line so that he can cut off those cross-court passes and we still have player two directing player five over here with player one guarding the reverse dribble or just the reverse pass everything else however will be the same so let's say they finally get trapped we're gonna have three four and five again in their zone here now we have the 1-3-1 one, one full court zone defense. Again, we have player 1 directing the player left or right. When that player starts going left or right, these players are going to pick up, but they don't want to go more than a foot or two past half court. The reason is, well, we don't want any miss, uh, missed well passes, pickoff passes, that kind of thing here. Now when player 5 moves up, we want these guys to move back just a bit, and we hope that he gets trapped there. Player 4 needs to be guarding that center because again, we don't want anything going down the center. That's always a bad sign. Now another popular play up here in Canada is the 2-1-2 full court press. Now what we want here is player 2 and player 1 to cut off the middle so that now player 5 needs to go one way or the other. Now when he starts going one way, player 1, he cannot go past that center line. Player 4 has to stay behind the half court line. Player 5 is hanging out here so that he picks off anything here. And player 3 wants to pick off everything here. So by having player 2 playing one on one against player 5, Player 1 uh, over here is again staying in line with player 5 for the reverse pass. And now once player 5 gets past half court, player 5 blue needs to jump in. Player 3 needs to pop down. Player 1 again running their zones here. Now our final full court press zone defense. Unless I've missed one, I don't think I have. But if I have, of course, leave a comment below on which one I missed. I always tend to miss one when I say I'm showing you everything. But... Anyways, this is the 2-2-1. Two, two, now, in this, in this zone, what we will have is players 2 and 1 cutting off the center of the court, forcing player 5 to go one way or the other. Now, when he starts going one way, of course, player 1 is going to continue to stay in line. Player 3 and 4 are going to stay home at half court, and they'll be watching center court so that no passes go there. I just thought of this. I know this sounds childish, but that kind of looks like a Pokeball, doesn't it? Yeah. Anyways, um, I'm a nerd, I guess. Ugh. Anyways, um, so player 5 is going to continue to dribble up the sideline. <laughs> player 1 in blue is going to stay in line. Player 4 is going to then, when player 5 starts getting on this side, he needs to cover that center. And player 3 is going to pop in front of 5. So that now he is trapped there. He can't go here. He can't go here. And these players will fill in in their zones. Basically, one takeaway from this video is once the player is trapped in that corner, um, basically there's always going to be three players here playing a zone here. Now, I hope that you have if, if you have enjoyed this video. If you have, hit that like button, subscribe. I do also have a book called The Unbeatable Basketball Defense Book. Go check it out in the link in the description below. It's really good. A lot of coaches have loved it. I've gotten lots of emails about how great it is. But also, if you have loved this video, but also if you have if I've missed anything, let me know in the comments below which zones I missed. I'm pretty sure I hit every single one of them. Um, but every time I say I'm showing you every play, I tend to miss one or two. So that happens. I'm human. But anyways, let me know in the comments below if I missed anything. And I'll see you guys again tomorrow for another daily basketball video because I do post new videos every single day. So I'll see you guys again tomorrow.